Ready? Oh, Lord. Wow! <laughs> oh. What's going on, you guys? I'm John Turner. This is What's the Table, and this, this might be my favorite time of year. It is bait cannon time, baby. Turkey season's over and I'm ready to get fishing and I'm ready to build my biggest bait cannon yet. We had a lot of fun building the first one. We researched, learned a lot, built our second one, made some design improvements, and this time we've learned even more. Listen to your comments and suggestions and now we're gonna make some more improvements in this third design and build the biggest, it reminds me of the minigun that Jesse Ventura carried in the Predator for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't need one this big. I cannot wait to build this thing. Y'all stick with me. So here's a quick look at the tools and materials you're gonna to need to build one of these. But don't worry, we'll post the full list in the description. All right, so this is the basic design as I envision it this time around. Um, you'll notice a couple of things in the design. I've gone back to this kind of U-shaped design, um, not because of performance reasons. Um, I really like the way that that straight line design in Big Cannon 2.0 worked, but uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to carry and the barrel isn't very well supported. You kind of have to hold the thing in order to keep it in a straight line when you're gonna fire it. So because this thing's gonna be so heavy this time around, because of the next design change, um, I'm gonna go back to this U-shaped design and I'm confident that the size of this air cylinder is gonna more than make up for any performance loss from the air going around these two bins. Second change, you'll notice this is incredibly thick. Um, this is Schedule 80 PVC. And we're going to this this time out of uh, for safety reasons. And it's it's a lot stronger and more durable, can handle a higher pressure than Schedule 40. Um, so I definitely wanna make sure as we're taking this thing up to higher and higher pressures with this storm coming in, um, that we're being as safe as we possibly can. So that's uh, design improvement number two. Design improvement number three, uh, this thing is just a big honking air cannon. I mean, this thing is a 51 inch long, four inch diameter air cylinder. Um, and I'm also going to sneak in, similar to how like race car drivers put a bigger fuel line in their car to get more gas in it. Um, this, I'm staying with the four inch in this 90 degree bin in the connector pieces, this 90 degree bin. And I'm, I'm not stepping this thing down until right before I get to this inch and a half ball valve, which serves as my trigger mechanism. So this is 51 inches of air. And then I've got another four inch air cylinder going all the way up here. So this linear distance uh, is gonna store pressurized air for me as well. I'm confident this thing is gonna shoot farther than any that we've made before. And I cannot wait to see it happen. If I don't get blown out of here. <laughs> this is fishing weather if I've ever seen it. What is happening right now? All right, I've gone ahead and cut out all of the parts that I need for this just to try to help the video move along a little bit. I don't know if you can hear me with this wind picking up. We're going to have like an F5 out here or something like that. Um, I mentioned that I cut out all the pieces, the connector pieces that you need. In this case, this is a five foot piece of Schedule 40 PVC. This can be Schedule 40 because it's a barrel. It's not going to be pressurized the same way that all of this stuff is to have to hold uh, pressurized air when I use Schedule 80. The only cutouts that I needed were two pieces of the Schedule 80 that are four and three eighths of an inch to connect my elbow bins. And then um, this is about a, I don't know, a two and a half inch piece. I'll measure it and post it for you guys. It's gonna serve as the connector from this step down into the ball valve on the pressurized side, the side of the assembly. And that really is all there is to it. You cut out three pieces of PVC and you're ready to glue the thing together. It couldn't be easier. All right, I should have mentioned one other improvement based on some comments and suggestions from our viewers. Big Cannon 2.0, we're gonna switch from like a, a bicycle tire valve, which is rubber, to something that's a little bit more substantial. We've got these metal um, clamp-in valves, same diameter, 0.453 inches, and we're gonna just drill a hole here, tap a hole into this end cap that's gonna be the very end of our air cylinder, and then install our air valve. And this is how we're gonna pump up the pressurized air uh, into the air tank. This does need to fit very tight. Um, and so, though I know in our prior installs, I used a half inch drill bit with that rubber, uh, with that rubber nozzle intake, whatever it is, rubber valve, that's the one. Um, I'm gonna still start with a smaller drill bit and then step up just to make sure that this thing, being a different, um, being a different valve, that this thing still fits tight because you do not want air to leak around this at all.
I sincerely hope that my valve is going to be long enough with this Schedule 80. This is a much thicker piece right here. It's for safety. This was a 13 30 seconds drill bit for anybody scoring at home. It's about to rain. All right, so here is my dilemma. Um, this Schedule 80 is thick. And it's so thick, in fact, that this, uh, the stem on this valve is not long enough. The threaded part's not long enough. I'm going to run it through this hole for me to put another rubber gasket, washer, and then this nut on here. And I'm going to have to sink this thing down, cinch it down very, very tight in order to get a tight seal inside here. So I'm going to have to go without the rubber gasket and the washer on the top and hope I can get this thing down tight enough. So I'm going to go with some silicone to seal the rest of the inside of this hole and hope that I can make an airtight seal. It's raining right now. So I'm going to have to pause and come back. So what I'm going to do is just coat this inside um, this gasket and up the, uh, up the threading with some silicone and just hope that all that together with a whole bunch of pressure when I cinch this thing down really tight is going to be able to hold air pressure inside. So here we go. Want to make sure it doesn't actually cover up the valve inside there. Okay, here goes. Keep a bunch of paper towels handy. Okay, there's that. I'm just gonna have to go with the nut by itself. Hold that in place, and we're gonna cinch that down as tight as we can get it with a pair of pliers. Okay, so in order to install this and cinch it down tight, I wound up having to use a deep socket and a like a ratchet adapter on my drill. Pull that thing down tight and hold it with a pair of pliers on the inside to keep it from rotating. And then I coated the inside of this, keeping the center part of the valve free for air to flow. Just coated the outside with silicone trying to prevent any leaks. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's on the inside of the cap. It'll never be seen again. It just has to be effective. All right, so um, getting all of our parts together, the last step is just to build our muzzle brake, which we need for absolutely no functional purpose. It just looks really cool. Um, take a drill bit, doesn't have to be any particular size, and we've got an inch and a half, what would otherwise be just a, a PVC connector that we're gonna slip on the end of our barrel with a bunch of holes bored in it, paint it up, it's gonna look really nice. Just put some random holes through the outside of this thing. At various intervals. Oh, our most popular comment, our most frequently asked question in Bait Cannon 2.0 was about the bricks from Bait Cannon 1.0. And I'm happy to tell you, follow me down here. Bam! The bricks are alive and well, baby. We got them fixed. I got these bricks fixed. You can't flip them over for anybody wondering. I'm gonna come back up here. You can't flip them over because they're only tumbled and died or whatever they are on uh, all but one side. So the bottom is smooth, it doesn't match, and I had to actually replace them, but I had some laying around from the patio install. Bricks are good, y'all be happy to know that. All right, so all of our parts are ready to go. Now it's just gluing together the entire assembly, and I'm gonna start with um, what I'll call the lower, which is everything from air chamber all the way up to um, the ball valve, which is our trigger mechanism. Uh, we'll call that a lower for any of you AR owners out there, you'll, you'll know what that is. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, PVC purple primer and some, I use, um, usually I use the medium duty, this time I'm going heavy duty uh, PVC cement. Something I've learned since the last time that we built one of these, you wanna make sure that you leave this purple primer or keep it uh, wet. Don't let it dry before you put your PVC cement on there and that helps the bonding process. Okay, purple primer on there. Look at this thing! Oh. Okay, Need that, Need this. Learn my lessons from the past. Don't get PVC cement on your bricks gonna have a bad time. Oh, I did it anyway! You're not serious. Yeah, I'm not serious. Serious. 
seriously. Where's the other drop cloth? Jam the sucker together. Word of caution. At this point, make sure that you have this thing on here straight. So you're not gonna have an air cylinder pointing one way and your barrel pointing the other way. Just line it up and eyeball it, that's fine. Oh, no, get on there. Why are you wanting to come off? Now this, I want to be a little bit careful that I don't get too much glue in here because I do not want to seal the ball valve shut. I'm going to face this trigger mechanism kind of to the side. I think we're pretty good here. I like the way. All right. Let's check the alignment one more time. So, what I'm calling the lower is assembled. Now I'm just gonna put the muzzle brake on the end of the barrel. Um, I'll glue the barrel in place once we have our support piece cut. It's gonna hold it at the right height in between the air cylinder and itself. All right, cool. Getting dark fast and we are done, at least gluing stuff together. Now all I've got left to do, cut the brace that's gonna hold this barrel in place, glue the barrel on, paint it up, and go to the beach, baby. It is time to build the brace that's gonna hold the barrel in place and just give it some support um, in between the barrel and the air cylinder. And I've got a piece of this treated one by six that I'm gonna use for this. Um, I just had that laying around in the garage. Um, but I've got a little bit of a problem. Usually what I would do is just take a piece of inch and a half, which is the same material that I'm using for the barrel, kind of use that as a template to trace around and kind of give me that um, semicircle shape that I'm going to use. The barrel lays in that and then I need on the other end of this another um, semicircle upside down that's going to fit right on that air cylinder. And this is fine. I've got inch and a half material. I've used every bit of my four inch material in that in that bait cannon so i don't have any scrap to make this circle it's fine i'm gonna raid my kids uh school supplies and i'm gonna use a compass and a little bit of math in order to make a template to make a perfect circle on the bottom of this um, on the bottom of this support this shouldn't be this hard you shouldn't need this many you know tools and materials but it's gonna work i'll show you how we do it diameter nope circumference is 14 and a quarter inches. Now I want the diameter and ultimately the radius. Is my radius. Um, quick math tells me the radius is 2.27 inches and I wanna be more precise with my measuring tape here. So I want 57.7 millimeters, same thing as 2.27 inches. So here we go. What do we got here? Let me have this pencil. I'm gonna put my center point for this circle right here, and then I want 57, almost 58 millimeters, which is right there. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna put the center of this compass right on that dot, and the pencil right there on that mark at 57, almost 58 millimeters, and we're just gonna make a circle. There we go. Okay. Now, fold your circle in half. Let's go ahead and draw our form.
need another measurement. This thing is so big. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I need to know the distance between the top of this arch right here that's gonna hold on the air cylinder and the bottom of the arch on the top that's gonna hold the barrel in place. So here we go. I see that at six and three eighths inches. Not gonna lie, that big cannon is heavy. All right, here we go. Six and three eighths inches between circle to circle. Again, that's the bottom of my arch. There we go. We're gonna put our piece of inch and a half right there on that midpoint. Try to center it up as best we can. Again, we're just going to take from this corner and cut to about right there. We want to leave a little bit of extra material. Come here and look at this. We want to leave a little bit of extra material on the outside of this semicircle. Okay? We're going to trace up that line right there. Okay? Same thing on this side. Looks like that fits pretty well. Um, not my best work, but probably not my worst. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the barrel into place onto the uh, ball valve trigger mechanism, and then we'll go ahead and screw in uh, that spacer that's gonna hold the barrel in place and support it. Here we go. So um, barrel is glued in place into the ball valve, and now we're just gonna take some of this, and this like banding stuff, it's got holes in it, have just laying around the garage from one of the last installs. So we're just going to screw this into place onto this brace and put this out towards the end of the air cylinder to give yourself as much support towards the end out here where it's going to be um, weakest and most flexible. So we're just going to screw this into place, wrap it around the air cylinder, cinch it down tight, make sure that the barrel is straight when you do that so it's not pointing off to one side. And then we'll do the same thing on the top. Then this barrel is not going anywhere. You can kind of use it as a, its own handle. Here's a subtle tip for you. When you screw this in place, pull it down as tight as you can get it, yes. But still, put your screw in on an angle pointing up. And that way, when it cinches down tight into the wood, it's gonna pull this even tighter and pull the rest of the slack out of it, okay? Now I've got a handle, I can pick this thing up, move it around. I know this PVC cement is not yet dry. That's okay, because this doesn't have to be an airtight seal on this side of that ball valve. All right, so we stopped off for the night in Auburn, Alabama to see some of our best, oldest friends in the world. And uh, we're gonna get this, this bait cannon out and test this thing. And I know we're in a residential neighborhood. There's a ton of woods back here behind us. And we've got a tire pump, an electric tire pump that is struggling to get this thing up as high as it'll go. I think we might be able to get it to 120 and we're just gonna test this thing shooting maybe a potato or a golf ball out into these woods and we may as well try it, right? And we're gonna have to see if we can find a stronger pump to use at the beach, but this, first time out, baby. I'm excited to see it work. All right, we got, um, with that pump, we got it up to 130 PSI. I'm amazed um, and it's holding air pressure. So we're gonna shoot a golf ball here to start with. Oh, we can't, it's too, too big. It won't go down the barrel. What can we put in it? What you got? Smaller potato? A small potato. How about a potato and a broom handle? The problem is with this, we're not gonna be able to get this all the way down the barrel. All right, so golf ball wouldn't fit. So we're gonna use one of our bait molds to, to right size a sweet potato and see, and see if we can get this thing to go. But we'll just do all we can here. All right, 
see what we can do here. Now, Adam, what's a safe direction for this thing? Yeah, towards the creek, probably best. Ready? Oh, Lord. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's still smoking. That was really it good. worked. That was really good. <laughs> that was louder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> My ear is ringing. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have made it to the beach. We're at our good friend Dave and Kelly's beach house down here. I don't know if you, can you see Kelly in there? I don't know if you can see her on this sweet screen and porch. But there's no science behind this at all. But before we get out and fish a little bit tonight, I think this thing's gonna shoot a little bit further if we put a nice coat of paint on it. What do y'all think? All right, so I hope you guys can hear me right now. The wind is howling, it's quartering into us right now. So this is like the perfect storm. It's, you can't cast out when the wind's blowing this hard into your face. Perfect test for the bait cannon. And we're looking at a trough right here and then another sandbar and the backside of that trough is about 400 yards. 400 yards out. If this thing can get to the backside of that sandbar, that's where we've been seeing fish break and that's where we want to fish. So let's just see if we can get there. What do you think? Load it up. We've got two different pumps today. We're going to try and just see how much air pressure we can get into this thing. I don't know if we're going to make it, but we're going to try it. See, we got our bait mold. With those little caps on the PVC, they get these little mushroom heads on there. You got to trim that down or else you can't get the bait mold out. Trim that down with your knife. It's going to expose some of your weight and that's okay. Okay. Now I need another fishing rod or something to hold that down. Ready? Yeah. Woo! Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad for 80, right? That's not bad for 80 at all. All right, that's it for us, you guys. We had a problem with the air compressor out here. It could only get to about 90 PSI. It was almost far enough. It landed in the middle of the sandbar that we're trying to clear. Uh, with a better compressor out here or a stronger battery, absolutely 100% we could have gotten to the back side of that thing. Love this bait cannon. Can't wait to use it some more. We hope this video was useful to you guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. It sure does help us out. We'll see you guys next time. God bless.